Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, it's 6 05. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, this is a set up kind of a public meeting in front of council. As in that sense, it's a special meeting of council. Uh, council will more uh, formally deal with the matter at hand at our meeting at uh, next Monday night at the council meeting. The purpose of this uh, meeting tonight is to consider an amendment to the existing engineer's report on the JRDR municipal drain. Now, we have with us tonight Mr. Andy Robinson uh, of the firm Robinson Consultants. At Robinson Consulting, and Robinson Consulting are the engineers of record for our municipal drains in this township. So, without any further background, I'm going to uh, let Mr. Uh, Robinson uh, put forward uh, the uh, purpose of the amendment and kind of outline the amendment. So, Mr. Robinson, if you would. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll come over here so I don't have my back to the audience or to council. So, just uh, and uh, it's good to see a number of people out. Uh, we were appointed by the township of Edwardsburg. Cardinal on February 6, 2018, to complete an amendment to the existing engineer's report to the James Riley with Richard Mr. Drain under Section 78 of the Range Act to incorporate changes to the culvert and crossing on the Bruce property and the relocation of the drain and culvert on the Carmichael property. Uh, and the amendment report is to include an assessment schedule for the cost of the amendment report and any additional modification required at the two properties. The amendment report is not to deal with the assessment and distribution of costs to date for modifications and related costs incurred since issuance of the certificate of completion. This is under the direction of the uh, drainage referee. Now subsequently on September 4, 2018, our firm was appointed to review the 2013 repairs and maintenance work on the James Riley with Richter Municipal Drain in Lot 6 and Session 6. Now, the existing engineer's report for the James Riley with Richter Municipal Drain uh, was dated May 2009 and it was adopted by bylaw number 2009-53. Subsequent to the construction of the drain, there were modifications to the farm culvert crossing on the Bruce property under the direction of the drainage superintendent, and a portion of the drain on the Carmichael property in Lot 3, concession 6, was realigned by the property owner without the required amendment to the existing engineer's report. And maintenance was completed on the DeWitt Richter section of the drain in Lot 6 and 7, concession 6 under the direction of the drain superintendent without the completion of an engineer's report or an, up, an update of the engineer's report. Now the modifications to the culvert on the Bruce property and the relocation of the drain on the Carmichael property were the subject of an appeal to the drainage referee. And the decision of the drainage referee came down initially in uh, in May of 2018, with a subsequent order with respect to the cost issued on August the 25th, 2017. And the decision of the acting drainage referee included an order that the township initiated a Section 78 process under the Drainage Act to incorporate the changes to the culvert crossing on the Bruce property and the relocation of the drain and culvert on the Carmichael property. Now, subsequent to the initial decision of the drainage referee, it, it, he was made aware that all of the costs that had initially been presented and which were assigned to the Bruce property, in fact, included an amount that was related to the maintenance work in section, in the concession, lot six of seven, concession six. This was this amount was seventeen thousand one hundred forty-five seventy-four. So then he went on and suggested that the township seek 
from from me my opinion regarding the Adobe work whether it qualifies as maintenance under section he said section 94 but it should have read section 74 or whether it goes beyond such as to require a further engineer's report <clears throat> now under the engineer under the drainage act there's a requirement for an on-site meeting when you get the drain initiated that's usually the first part of it now there's uh, it's, it's been determined that through the process that this meeting doesn't actually have to take place on site so in in the case of of the Carmichael and the Bruce property because both of those property owners were involved in the process they were well aware of what had to be done and uh, therefore it really did uh, we didn't feel there was a need to have another extra meeting and in the case of the work in lot six and session the work had already been done there was no plan to do any more work so again I came to the conclusion that, it, that there's a cost associated with these on-site meetings that it wasn't necessary and therefore uh, it, it wouldn't serve any purpose <clears throat> So again, the purpose of the amendment report is to incorporate the, the changes uh, on the Bruce property and the Carmichael property and also uh, to uh, deal with the work that was done in lots in uh, lots <coughs> to seven concession six. And this required an amendment to the existing report that uh, presently is in place by bylaw. So, with respect, and I'm not going to read through all of this stuff, I think everybody has had a copy of the report, but, so we looked at the Bruce property and extension, did some surveys and basically confirmed that the work that had been done was adequate and there wasn't a need for any additional work to be done. And again, the Carmichael property law three concession six, now in that case there was no plan so we completed the survey and we also complete the plan and profile of the works and in the case of the maintenance lot six and seven again we reviewed what had been done we did some surveying to to confirm uh, the work that had been done and uh, and we provided some plans in the report now under assessments Again, according to the decision of the, of the drainage referee, costs associated with the appeal to the referee are dealt with in the decision of the referee. The costs that we have to deal with in this report are, uh, which will be assessed to property owners, basically regarding the amendment to the report and in the case of the work in Lot 6 and 7 to Session 6, uh, with respect to how that should be assessed. So again, uh, in the case of the Bruce property, there was an amount that will we'll come to the actual amount of the assessment later on, which will be assessed to, to that property. And the same thing applies to the Carmichael property. There's a, a cost associated with updating the engineer's report. In both cases, the work that had been done was we considered to be adequate and there wasn't a requirement to do additional work. So there is a, a provision under the Drainage Act for a, what's called a special benefit assessment. So that in the case of both of these, we, we kind of classify it in that category because it was assessment specifically to those properties and therefore should not be charged back to other landowners or property owners within the bigger drainage area. Now, in the case of uh, the maintenance in lot six and seven, I'm not gonna go through this. I can answer any questions if there are some later on, but essentially the work was done by the drainage superintendent in various likely feeling that it was something that, that could be done under, under the drainage superintendent's jurisdiction. Although there, there is provision in the act for doing some improvement work, but it was much less than what this total amount cost. So what we looked at in, in the case of, of this area was uh, to, to kind of 
differentiate the cost between what should be charged to the upstream landowners and what we felt was related to the culvert in, in the installation under the county road. And just to kind of clarify, under, under the Municipal Drainage Act, any work done within the road allowance is the responsibility of the of the road authority, as the act says, and and the full cost of that is is either is the work is either done by the road authority and they pay the cost, or if the municipality does work, then that full amount gets charged back to the road authority. So, in looking at the work that had been done, yeah, I mean there are two <coughs> main areas, and there was not a specific breakdown of the amount of the particularly of the arm stone, there was two main parts in, in the, the cost estimate. One is for the clean out of the drain and flattening the slopes to, to uh, uh, present a, a cross section that would be less likely to erode in the future. And the other was the placement of uh, armor stone or rock at both ends of the culvert. So that without having a specific breakdown, we concluded that about 80% of the cost of the work for the armor stone and, and rock protection should be assessed to the county road authority as an assessment for special benefit. So this, the total amount for the rock protection was 5967.50. So our conclusion was that $4,774 worth of that should be assessed as a special assessment to the county, and 1193.50 would be assessed to the upstream property owners. Now the remainder of the cost associated with maintenance uh, is to be assessed to the properties within the area that are upstream of where that work was completed. And that kind of is in accordance with, with the assessment schedules in the 2009 report and the subsequent bylaw. Again, this is a common approach for maintenance is it's you, the, the engineer's report includes an as, assessment schedule. Uh, sometimes we differentiate between construction and maintenance, but often it's for, for both. So that when work is done in the future, maintenance done in the future, then those assessment schedules are used and of course they're adjusted proportional to the amount of work that is is completed. So that again the the assessment uh, based on the referees hearing will for the Bruce and Carmichael work are well the Carmichael work was done so there was no special assessment for that but the cost for the Bruce crossing will be assessed to the that property and the uh, maintenance costs under for lot six and seven concession six are distributed as assessment for special benefit to the county road authority and assessment to upstream properties pro rata in accordance with the assessment schedule in the engineer's report. And then we also had to look at the cost of, of our work to do this amendment to the report. So that if you have your Report handy, if you look at Appendix B, the assessment schedule at the back, it's the last, last page likely. So the what we've done in this case is we've broken it down, the cost for the Section 78 report, and then for the maintenance that was was done, and then there's a total cost. And again, this does not include the cost which the referee dealt with with regard to the previous uh, uh, work on the Bruce Crossing in particular, and it doesn't include any of the costs associated with the, the Carmichael work. So, and in looking at this, we we kept track of the time it took us to do surveys in the field and produce the plans that are required and write the report. So that in the case of the Carmichael property, we assessed 
$4,800 of the cost of the report. In the case of the Bruce property, it's $3,900. And a big part of the difference there is that we didn't have to redo all the plans. And then there was an amount beyond that which we felt should be distributed uh, partly to the upstream landowners for the work that was uh, undertaken, partly to the county for that special benefit work, and partly to the township uh, just because we felt there should be some assessment there based on the overall process. So that they, those numbers are, are broken down in, in that assessment schedule. And then under maintenance, that is the amount which I've explained before, $4,700 to the county as a special assessment, primarily for the rock protection around the ends of the culverts, and then $12,375.74 for the maintenance of the drain, which uh, is, will be assessed to the upstream landowners. So, open for questions. And uh, because the engineer is here and he's presenting the report, he'll take the questions directly. You don't have to address them through the chair. I'll just monitor the discussion. So you can address the questions directly to Mr. Robbins. So this 12375 for maintenance, what, what was the maintenance done to, for that cost? Well, that was primarily flattening some of the slopes on the drain and cleaning out uh, material that had deposited and accumulated in the bottom of the drain and and some allowance for some additional rock protection. But, but that was just in the area that, that you described, the Bruce and Carmichael area? No, it wasn't the Bruce and Carmichael. None of the costs for the Bruce and Carmichael are included in here. They're paid for in the case of the Carmichael, they did the work themselves and paid for it. In the case of the Bruce property, uh, that amount has, the referee has assigned the amount for that work directly to be paid by the Bruce property. Okay, so this $12,000, where was the maintenance done? It was done on the, on the drain in that area, lot six and seven. Upstream. Upstream of where this last work was done? <coughs> Sorry, when you say where the last work was done. Well, Carmichael and Bruce. Yeah, yes, it's upstream. It's it's basically a little bit downstream, but most of it's upstream of County Road 22. Okay. So when do we find out the assessment for the each property owner has to pay? Well, I, I might look to Mr. Grant to comment on that because we weren't, that wasn't part of what, what we were to do. We were to come up with this plan and to come up with a fair amount to be assessed. It'll be assessed in accordance with the original schedule, but I think uh, Mr. Grant might point out that some people will actually get credits. Yes. Thank, thank you. So, so the origin, the the seventeen thousand one forty five seventy four was was originally billed out at, um, back in, I believe twenty twenty sixteen. So, what the, what the findings are from uh, uh, from Mr. Robinson's report is that only twelve thousand three seventy five seventy four should have been billed out. So, th that that difference once once we get through the the amendment to the engineer's report all the potential appeals that take place, then th that, uh, that, um, well, that refund will, will be uh, sent your way because that, that's already been paid for. That, that work was, was, was billed out and paid for back in, I, I believe, 2016. If, and, and I just, maybe for, a little more explanation. I, if my understanding is correct, just based on having been through the referees' hearing, is that the total cost, including the cost for the Bruce Crossing, had originally been assessed to the property owners upstream. So now that that amount will be uh, assigned directly to the Bruce property, that amount will, will essentially will end up with a refund for the people who are 
the other people. And, and also, we've assigned some of this cost to the road authority as a special benefit. So, so I, I don't know what the total amount that was originally assessed out, but it was certainly considerably more than the, tw the seventeen thousand. Well, which way is upstream? The south of there? West, or I guess. West. Mm -hmm. I don't have my plan here in front of me, but it would be. Uh, well, that's important too. Yeah. I guess it's yeah southwest. Okay, so from looking at this picture, how how does this affect us? We live at the corner of Canada Road, Canada Road 21 and Canada Road 22. So like we're like way far away from this drainage situation. So I'm not really sure what I'm not really sure how this affects us. Uh, well, again, I. I, I Guess and maybe Mr. Grant can answer this. Are were the people who were invited, who were sent a copy of the report, and invited? Were they the people who had been assessed previously under when when the work was originally done? Um, if if I'm not mistaken, that all those on the drain were um, sent the notice. So in other oh, words, okay. if, if they were on the original, if, they were on if the that original, oh, I think we should change that. Mm -hmm. If that piece of property was on the original assessment schedule, that piece of property was invited to the meeting. I, I, I believe so. Yeah. And, and so for the, yeah, for, for the gentleman that's asking the question, uh, part of this, uh, this is the drainage area. This is where we live, so I'm just wondering. Tire catchment area. Yeah. So You may not be on the drain, but you may receive a benefit yeah, from the drain. You may fall into that area. Okay. And that's why you make it. That's, that's potentially where you may have originally. Right. Okay. 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 Sorry. Yep. No, that's good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, the principle, and, and I'm going to pick up on that word benefit, because in the Drainage Act, there's two general assessments, one's called an outlet assessment. And anybody who is within the drainage area, again, upstream of where that work is done, is assessed a portion of the cost. And there's also a, actually a benefit assessment, which generally is assessed to properties which immediately abut the drain and therefore have, there's a definition in the drainage act, but generally have a, a, a greater use of that drain. But I, many times I stood in front of groups that were, People say, oh, I don't have any benefit. But you, you, you're not assessed a benefit under the drainage act, you're, but your water, some of your water gets to the drain and therefore everybody within the drainage area, again, upstream of where the work is being done, is assessed a portion of the cost. Okay, any other questions for Mr. Robinson? I think my question is to this gentleman. When do we find out uh, what our assessment is or not? Okay, so I'll go back to the process. So once the amendment to the original engineer's report is accepted by council, which on the basis of the meetings that have been held so far, that will take place on the 25th of November, which is next week. Council will formally accept the amendment to the engineer's report. Then I believe that there's an appeal period, is that correct? Uh, that, that is correct. I know. And what is the length of the appeal period after the council accepts the amendment? So so after so after first and second reading, which would be November twenty fifth, right. within thirty days from that time frame, we, we would provide notice uh, for a, a quarter revision uh, hearing. Which would, which would be held, uh, I believe, 20 to 30 days yeah, it, it's following some that period? Minimum of 20 and maximum of 30 days from the date the notice is sent out. So. All right, so you have to understand the process here. So on the 25th, we give the bylaw to amend the original engineer's report, the 2009 engineer's report. 
we'll give that bylaw first and second reading only. It doesn't become final until it gets third reading, which will be some months after. We'll give it first and second reading. After it's got first and second reading, then staff sends a notice out, invites is this be a, 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 a notice for, for a court of revision? Uh, okay, now is the court of revision actually convened? We, uh, with that notice, we will, we, we will provide a, a date and time and location of where that would be held. Okay, so then you'll get notice of the date and the time and the place of the court of revision in case you don't like the amendment that you're talking about tonight. Yeah, to and the it, it's this is a little different report because normally, you know, the, the the full reports include assessment schedules with everybody's individual assessment, whereas this doesn't. So, uh, but the the process is there, and in part, and people have to get written submissions uh, in with their reasoning for. Uh, objecting if they object to the, to the, the assessments uh, with 10 days before the court is, is uh, being held. Now, although I think the court actually has to convene and the court's normally made up of either three or five individuals, they don't have to be members of council, but I think terminology is they need to be people who could be members of council so that uh, but if there, so the court would have to convene, but if there are no appeals, then the court would just uh, convene and then it would be over. There's also, if in the case of assessments, if, if people appeal their assessments to the court of revision and they're not happy with the outcome of the court of revision, because the court of revision ultimately has to make a decision if there are appeals, then there is an option of appealing that to to the drainage tribunal. You can also appeal to the drainage tribunal if for some reason you're not happy with the technical report. And there's a, some, I think it's 20 days uh, or another 10 days after the uh, court of revision sitting to, to, to have that appeal. There's also the provision to appeal to the referee on legal grounds. This has already gone through an appeal to the referee, which uh, resulted in the recommendation to update this report. So, hopefully, uh, if, if those, if if there's no appeal to the either the tribunal or the referee, then and I don't have this number right on top of my head, but let's say within 20 days of the court of revision, then council can give third reading to the bylaw, and then that. Normally that then precipitates getting in and getting ready to do construction, but in this case, it's at that time that, that the township could deal with the uh, uh, any refunds. So in other words, we probably won't see the end of this until next year. <coughs> well, uh, 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 the, the process of revising the original assessment schedule uh, is, a, is a lengthy, complicated mathematical process, and so the staff won't engage in that until all the, everything else is in place. So you're, I think you're probably, your estimate is probably pretty close. I think it'll probably be January before you'll get the revisions to the assessment schedule. And then, of course, we'll be right in the middle of budget discussions, and there'll be other pressures on the Treasury Department. Yeah, I would think just given where we are today, that likely the court revision would be scheduled for sometime early January. Just, you know, with Christmas and everything else, it's in the, in the time frame, so that, uh, Any other questions for me? Okay, Mr. Carmichael. That's more for Ms. D. It's, uh, now, has the township been, has the township received a uh, payment on the Bruce property that was ordered? Um, <clears throat> I, 
I really don't think that's a question pertaining to the amendment to the to the report, does it? Well, it'll be assessed back to the assessment. So I'm, I'm sorry. So, I'm not, I'm not. so according to the drainage referee, the referee ordered that uh, Bruce is paid back on the work that was uh, charged out to the landowners, was assessed to the landowners, um, to be charged back as a special benefit to the Bruce property itself. I think it was some of 30, 31,000. <clears> Has the township received that yet? Or? Uh, we, 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 have, we haven't started down that process until, <coughs> until this uh, is, is finalized with respect to the amendment to the report because uh, th there will be some additional costs involved here specific to the Bruce property. Right. So once, once that's all completed, then we, we will start down that process. Any other questions for Mr. Robinson? Okay, if there are no other questions for Mr. Robinson, uh, I, I, I'm going to thank everybody for being in attendance here tonight. And I'll thank Mr. Robinson. This is the second presentation that he's made to Council on this specific issue. I'll thank him for once again coming and uh, meeting with the public and answering your questions. And then I'm going to draw the meeting to, an, to a, a close. One last chance. All right, um, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'm going to go Councillor Hunter and second by Councillor Dillavaugh. Those in favor of adjournment, motion is carried. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you.